G'day, my name is Jason Ball. I'm an out Aussie Rules football player, joined today by Matthew Mitchum, gold medalist. G'day, my name is Jason Ball. I'm an out Aussie Rules football player, joined today by Matthew Mitchum, gold medalist in the Beijing Olympics and also an out athlete. So um, thanks so much for coming in, Matthew. Thanks, Jason. Really great to meet you. I'm a big fan. I remember thinking when I was really young and realised that I was gay, if I had have known of a Matthew Mitchum or a Daniel Kowalski or, or an athlete who was open, that would have made a, a really huge difference to me. Um, I was wondering what, what the coming out or sort of realising that you were gay experience was like when you were really young and sort of did you have any role models? Um, yeah, I guess I was the same as you. Um, you know, I suppose my earliest memories of like watching sports and kind of looking for idols was Sydney 2000, mm -hmm. um, watching Ian win all his gold medals, watching Kathy just take it home, um, you know, and being really proud of that. And I guess that's where my Olympic bug sort of started. I suppose being in diving, it was easy for me to look towards Greg Luganis as an idol, um, not just because he was the best diver that there has ever been in diving history um, but just because of his grace and then you know of course he um, you know he's, he's a gay icon so um, he was he was my idol when I was growing up. The coming out experience for you obviously you came out before you had a really big profile before you'd won goal in Beijing I was wondering was that an easy decision for you or was there sort of was it something that weighed heavily on your mind even though at the time you didn't have a big profile? I guess going back to your last question I have known that I've liked boys ever since I was like, I don't know, five years old or something. Mm -hmm. um, I had, I came out to my mum when I was 14 as bisexual, you know, like it, it was kind of a gateway thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, and that was actually a really funny story. I was like, oh, well, she actually caught some sort of salacious material on my computer and I had to go, oh, you know, I think I'm bi. And she it's was like, well, duh. Story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was really quite comfortable with all my friends um, and most of my family by the time I was 18. So in the lead up to Beijing in um, 2008, I was 20 and a journalist um, asked me this really innocent question, who do you live with? And I'd already decided by that stage um, that I was going to be absolutely upfront and honest mm -hmm. um, with everybody about every aspect of myself, including my sexuality, um, and to really honour that uh, for my own sort of self-esteem. And so I answered that question really honestly, and I said, oh, I live with my partner, um, and you should have seen her eyes light up. You know, she was like, this is journalistic <laughs> <Yeah>. gold, you know. <laughs> but she was really respectful because she knew about the odd stigma that the gays mm -hmm. don't get the endorsement deals. And, and so she asked me if I wanted that to go to print. And, um, and so I really had to think about it um, mm -hmm. for a day or two. And, um, and I decided that I did want to follow up with this, um, with this honouring myself, my sexuality, being um, completely honest with the country because I wanted Australia to know exactly who they were supporting if they chose to support me at the Olympics. Um, and besides that, you know, it would have saved a really awkward coming out experience afterwards, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. You think maybe that did make it easy for you, that you'd sort of already done it, uh, you'd already come out. And so I think, you know, what might be hard for a lot of people who are currently playing in that sort of pro level of sport in any field is that they have to actually come out, they have to actually say it when they've already got a profile, it's going to be a big deal, but you sort of got it out of the way early in a, in a sense. Exactly, yeah. It was much easier for me to have done it the way I did it. Um, and I feel really sorry for um, for the people who are already in the public spotlight who, you know, the media just continually, um, you know, makes allegations about their sexuality and, and all this sort of stuff uh, in every field, I suppose, um, whether it's wishful thinking or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, because the reason I didn't come out to people in my life um, uh, earlier than when I was 20 um, was because I felt like I'd been effectively lying to mm -hmm. them by not being completely open and honest with them. You know, so it was really hard for me to come out to people I'd been training with as a teenager because, you know, I kind of felt like, oh, hey, I've been lying to you for the last five years. Mm. I'm actually gay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really feel for people who are already in the public spotlight um, who... Um, who are hiding their sexuality and who might feel the same way that, you know, the coming out means that they've been deceiving people for a long time. Yeah, I know for me it was always sort of using words like they and them instead of he or she when talking about a partner or something like that to try and avoid that sort of awkwardness. Exactly, or, but you don't want to like lie that. either. You yeah. know, you want to be as uh, um, honest with people without actually lying. Yeah, well, from my experience, you know, playing Aussie Rules football, there were times when I lied. You know, I'd make up stories about girls, but that never mm. really worked. I mean, firstly, when it came to girls and sex, 
text. I had no idea what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and secondly, like it was exhausting maintaining those sort of fabricated stories because there was always follow-up questions and mm. stuff like that. Yeah, I actually, um, you know, I think you're much braver than I was just because of the stereotypes of the, of the, of the um, sports that we both mm -hmm. participate in. I mean, diving is stereotyped to be a gay sport, which actually, unfortunately, it's not true. Otherwise, I'd have you know many more <laughs> friends in the sport. But um, it made it much easier for me to come out because I felt like you know there was already a stereotype mm -hmm. there. Um, whereas you know with Aussie Rules football, um, and while I know that the code is doing a lot to stamp out homophobia, which is absolutely amazing. I know that it's still so rare and that, you know, you would probably feel like, you know, the only gay in the village um, by coming out in, in a sport where it's particularly rare. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the AFL has done some really great stuff. You know, this year on Idaho International Day mm -hmm. Against Homophobia, we had a whole lot of AFL players through the Players Association take a pledge never to use homophobic language, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was really powerful. And mm -hmm. I think straight allies are a really, really important part of this process. And you might be familiar mm -hmm. with Athlete Ally, um, which is part in the US where they're sort of getting straight athletes to speak openly um, about, you know, their support for their GLBTI friends and family and um, you know uh, so what what do you think when it comes to straight allies and how have you know the athletes your colleagues and stuff like that sort of reacted to you um, I think straight allies are absolutely essential um, and I think it's so wonderful that you know these people are um, sort of helping um, mm -hmm. to support us um, and I suppose being that um, that bridge between um, this our minority community and the wider community like it, it helps to normalize us a bit and it also helps to boost um, our numbers of support because I mean it's kind of hard when the only people who are advocating you know gay rights or, or anti-homophobic behavior is gay people you mm -hmm. know like that's, that's a very small number and um, so it helps to have people on the other side of the fence who are who are doing that sort of thing as well. As far as people in my um, support network mm -hmm. and my environment go, um, they were all really, really supportive. Um, you know, all of that catastrophizing, all of that that worst case scenario stuff, um, it never turned out. You know, everyone was really supportive. We've had a question from the floor. Um, keen to know about being an openly gay athlete and privacy. Obviously, being openly gay, um, people know a bit about your personal life and uh, sort of what that scrutiny has been like. Has that been comfortable for you? Have you sort of regretted coming out sometimes because you've sort of got this extra scrutiny on you? Um, I'm actually pretty lucky because I've had the same partner for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I, it, it's not like I've had to, you know, being in tabloids, you know, um, being on dates with this person and this person and, and mm -hmm. rumors and stuff and all this speculation um, in the media. Like it's, it's always been one solid, consistent person. And, uh, and I suppose being so frank about um, my sexuality and, and my love life, people don't really have that many questions to ask because everything's out on the table. The thing that um, I suppose I found most surprising was when I came out, the amount of support, like I've not had a single shred of negative feedback from the public, from the media, mm -hmm. from, um, from the sports um, federations, nothing. Like it's all been 100% overwhelming support and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, well, that's really good. I think that's a story that needs to get out there because especially a lot of other athletes who might be in the closet or something like that would have these sort of fears. And to say that those fears are unfounded, that, you know, you're not going to be, you know, scrutinised to that nth degree or you're not going to get homophobic people giving you a hard time um, is a really important message as well. Mm. Um, and, I, you know, I also really agree with that that statement that, you know, putting it all out there, there's no room for a rumour or an innuendo and stuff like that. Mm. This is who I am, this is who I'm with. Take it or leave it. Yeah. Have you experienced a similar um, sort of feedback? Um, well, I mean, from my perspective, I mean, you know, I'm much less of high profile, you know, playing country football, happen to be the only AFL player at any level to come out. So there's, uh, you know, some level of community attention on me and, um, you know, being single um, at the time, you know, bringing various boys to different events and stuff like that, you know, sometimes it gets picked up, but, uh, you know, I think the more awkward thing was, say, being on Grinder, and someone recognises you and like, oh, I've seen you on TV. Um, and I was like, yeah, I deleted that app after, and after yeah. a little bit. Yeah, not for me. I obviously um, have had some funny experiences like that too. You know, we're, I think there are about four people who, are, four, four or five people who are using my picture at the London Olympic Games, not 
people within the village, but people outside the village. Right. So, you know, like I had... thought it was you or something like that? I didn't. I didn't. Well, I wasn't (laughs) using it, but I had a lot... Like my boyfriend was saying, oh, a lot of my friends were saying that there were... That you were on Grindr. And it ended up being that there were like four of me on Grindr, but none of them were me. Uh, Well, that's all we have time for. Um, I'm Jason Ball, and we've been joined by Matthew Mitch. And Matthew, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Tonight on Event TV, in the thick of it with Sammy Whitehead, I'm joined by not only two amazing friends of mine, but wonderful advocates of the community, Michelle and Stephen Barber. You're in the thick of it with Sammy and tonight I'm really excited because I get to be joined by not only some people that are amazing friends of mine but fabulous advocates for our community. Stephen and Michelle Barber, welcome to Bend. Hi. I know it's very exciting (laughs) for you and also really nerve wracking because it's the first time on TV. Yes, for some. But you you need to get used to it because uh, you guys are just so inspirational and I'm really honoured to have you in my life as friends. But you've always done so much wonderful work for the community. Tell us a little bit about the history of how this all started. Well, do Michelle nag me? Uh, Michelle has has been. No, really? Michelle? I know. Sorry. She's (laughs) actually been an avid joy listener for for many years. And she heard about Eight the Play at Her Majesty's uh, one night only. Yep. Um, Kept on at me about buying tickets, buying tickets tickets, um, I actually went online and had a look at the uh, LA production mm. and went, okay, that's it, we'll buy the tickets. Now, as it happened uh, on the um, on the program, it actually said on the back of the page, if you want uh, to produce this play, contact Broadway by Impact. We took about three seconds, that I is, think, yeah, yeah. To, to decide and it was... That, on from there. Wow, how amazing! Because your your background, of course, a lot of it, uh, many years in theatre. He's got a little bit of the bug, hasn't he, Michelle? <laughs> A wee bit, <laughs> yes. He does like the attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just I'd say it's all about Stephen. Yeah. It's yeah. always all about yeah. Stephen. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll be the day. Yeah. But um, for you being involved in something like this, Michelle, even though you know that he's been, you know, such so passionate about the theatre, it's also something that really is interesting for you, especially mm. with producing the play. Yeah, very much so. And uh, I think the learning curve with Eight was straight up. You know, we never. It, it was. A, it's a massive undertaking, and also there's quite a bit of weight on your shoulders. You want to make sure that you you do the production justice and you also want to make sure that you tell uh, the story that needs to be told well and and accurately and we had a cast of 21 which in itself was a mammoth task I think we had is that one of the biggest productions you've done? Oh, yes. It, it was really our only yeah. first, it was our first production. Mm. Um, I've been involved in theatre, I've directed, I've acted, um, done, done backstage stuff, but never anything on, on this scale and uh, magnitude. It was, um, the people at Broadway Impact were absolutely phenomenal in their support. Um, and they do give you a lot of tools to help you along through the production. Mm. Um, but we, I, I guess, we bit deep into the pie and we decided the only place to present this was Chapel Off Chapel. Um, one of the, the um, preten- oh, sorry, the precursors to doing this play is you actually have to donate the funds back. You cannot make money out of the play. Because of course the play was first written all about, the reason it's called Eight the Play was all about Proposition Eight in mm. America, which thankfully that and DOMA has been finally put to, to a very well earned death. Mm. Um, but. Part of that is uh, the money has to actually be donated to organisations for and supported of marriage equality. Mm-hmm. And we actually decided to take a little bit of a different, it, it was not just for us about marriage equality, it was about in- equality in general mm. across the board. So the, the three organisations that we chose was uh, Joy 94.9, uh, the Enough Campaign and Minus 18. So we wanted it to be able to cover all different areas of the LGBTI community. So the profits went to those three organisations, which in turn opened up all these doors for us to meet the people part of those organisations and then become more and more involved ourselves. Have you had people say to you, I mean, you know, like I've, I've known you guys for quite a while, but have you had people say to you, what's this straight couple doing, like doing all this <laughs> stuff for the Rainbow How family? Often? <laughs> often. Yeah. often. Because, I mean, really, you're the gayest straight people I know. Your blood <laughs> runs rainbow. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, yeah. But it's just, uh, it's, it's just so amazing that, you know, you've made this such a passion and, and pretty much part of your life's work. 
Well, we do have a son who identifies as gay. Um, Nelson was the catalyst for us, I guess, becoming involved and wanting to support because mm. obviously we, we love our son. Um, but it's no longer the, the reason behind mm. it. We, we see a, a lot of the uh, prejudice that, that uh, the rainbow community suffer from. Um, we, we see that uh, th things just need to be equal on, on a greater scale. And Look, it's come to fruition with you really, mm. hasn't it, now with the program that you present on Joy 94.9 Stand Up yeah, Straight. And, I know, uh, 12 months ago if anyone said I would do that, be talking on air, I mean I would have thought they were ooh, ooh, a bit kooky. So uh, how did she end up getting <laughs> on air, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a story in itself. Um, because of our involvement with Joy, we'd heard about the Taste of Radio course, um, and I just thought it would make a, a, a really nice Christmas present for Michelle. So, when, uh, Christmas two years? A year ago. Yeah, yeah mm. not one just gone, one before. Um, she found wrapped up under the tree a little scroll that basically gave her her intro into the Taste of Radio. Wow. And, I went every and how that, how's that journey been for you? <laughs> That's the word, a journey, and it's so cliche. It's used, I use it so often, mm. uh, but it has been an amazing journey. I met people I would never have met before, firstly, sitting in joy every week. Uh, it, it, you have part of that uh, course, you actually put a program proposal together. I never thought I would. it would come to fruition. It was just a bit of a pie in the sky. I had an idea that I wanted to do a show about mums and gay kids, but it wasn't, it didn't have enough legs really or enough arms, whatever you want to call it. So I kind of wanted to present a show that was from a straight perspective, but still representing and supporting and encouraging the LGBTI community. And so that was the reason behind it. And not only is it, it's been a bit of fun, oh, um, yeah. because you know, like we've had some fun on the program, sort of, you know, you do, you do different things, of course, you know, talking about, you know, beats and lesbian dating and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. But you, you've, you've put on some incredibly wonderful and very serious programs about mm, dealing mm. with depression in the community and people associated with the community and, yeah. and things like um, stigma about status and all that mm. sort of stuff. And it and it has become such a very important program. Thank you. And and the other thing is, I I've met and interviewed people that I would never have done before. And I kind of have in the back of my mind, there's the, this there's this Mr. and Mrs. Neighbour or Mr. and Mrs. Mm. Straight down the street that might turn on and listen to Joy, and all of a sudden they hear me talking to a trans man or a trans woman or talking about depression, as you say, within the gay community, or uh, kids, youth, teachers. Uh, we've had people from sporting organisations and uh, talking about being useful and valuable in the community and if we can convince or provide information that was, would never have been known then I feel that that's my duty almost. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm given a microphone not many people have that opportunity. No, well that's right. And again, it adds to all of the wonderful advocacy work that mm. you've both done for our community. And it's just been, its uh, as I've said, and I've say all the time, it's an honor to have you in my lives. You're an thank inspiration you. to me every day. And thank you, you so much for coming in and spending some time with me thank on you. Bent TV. You've been with Sammy in the thick of it with Michelle and Stephen Barber on Bent TV. Hey, this is Ginny on Bent TV for another segment of Entirely Powered by Ginny. What an exciting show we've got lined up for you tonight. Hey, this is Ginny on Bent TV for another Entirely Powered by Ginny. I'm pretty excited about these two ladies coming up on the show because they've collaborated to write an awesome song about equal love and marriage equality. Kimmy Mack and Delay, welcome to Bent TV. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> now, you two have been causing a bit of stir all over the social media. I've um, heard you've written a song for equal love and uh, marriage equality, which sounds pretty awesome. It's been fun, that's for sure. <laughs> Now your background's delay, you obviously have your own profile and Kimmy Mac, you were part of a band called Escaping April, now you kind of gone solo. What's the transition been like for you? It's been interesting. I've sort of had the opportunity to work with different produ pr producers and um, it's been kind of fun. When I got introduced to Delay, it was the first time I'd ever worked with a rapper, so that's just been so exciting and uh, interesting for us both. <laughs> We've had the for best me. time. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, but I've loved the transition and I've been able to meet new um, yeah, producers and engineers and it's just been, it's been really cool. And Delay, have you kind of introduced Kimmy Mack to your hip hop style or is she still working on that? So I was Kimmy Mack, that's pretty hip hop, I like that name. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, Kimmy's a style 
fashionista, she could show me any day, give me some tips. So. <laughs> But yeah, I tried to get her to wear the hat. She wasn't too keen, so just oh, let it rest. I think her haircut kind of stops. It's not really a hat head, is it? Nah, it's not, not going to work. Yeah, no. It's a funky yeah. do as is. Yeah, it's pretty rocky. <laughs> <laughs> so working with a rapper bikini, how was that for you, like working that with a hip-hop artist? That was awesome. Um, when we were introduced, it was kind of like, whoa, you know, it was a bit of a, a new thing for both of us, and it's just happened so organically really like besides the fact that we wrote about 14 versions of the song before <laughs> we decided on the version it just yeah we've had the best time and um yeah it's it's been good yeah definitely <laughs> yeah. kim is breezy as like i'm the most awkward person getting out half the time so but when i met kim she's just you're automatically comfortable with her so it's yeah she yeah, does definitely have been easy to the big goof in her <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I just aired that on TV. Everyone knows now, Kimmy. Everyone knows. It's cool now, this song was actually inspired, Husk Can't Lie, it's called. It was inspired by the No Hate campaign, which is coming to Australia. Huge marriage equality campaign. What's your stance on marriage equality? Oh, obviously, then, being lovers of the campaign. That was a very <laughs> poorly worded question, but you know what I mean. You know what you mean. Yep, um, well, obviously, I'm all for it. Like, I just, um, I, I don't understand how it, cannot have already been you know sort of legalized by now like it's just uh yeah i don't know how to word it but yeah <laughs> i'm for it i am for just it just listen like to the song it's all we're, all, song. Hum yeah. we're all human beings pretty much and it's just love who cares who you're loving like yeah, yeah. we're and all equal the way you've written the song hearts can't lie it's actually it's not too angsty it's got like obviously matters of truth and, and from a personal perspective of how gay and lesbian people feel about marriage equality but you've also included like an uplifting message in there was that your intention from the start I think so. We didn't want it to be a real downer song or too emotional. And I guess because we've had the opportunity to play at Midsummer and the campaign, we wanted it to be, um, I guess, full of energy and have be something people can enjoy listening to as well. So yeah. that's why we're pretty stoked. We went with the uh, version 14, <laughs> which was, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> which was the sort of dance version, and and the lyrics just seem to to work well together. I guess. Yeah, we've had so many lyrics, <laughs> but um, you know, I'd sort of write parts and then Delay sort of responds to what I'm saying and says it in her special cool rap way, which we've discovered <laughs> I sense. can't do. <laughs> Bit long process. I try, but, um, I've heard her rap. She's lying. She's <laughs> Come on, it's a rap with a silent yeah, C. She doesn't even need me. She can kill it. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's just I can't remember what we're talking yeah, well, about. Well, we now. didn't. Just the approach we went. We didn't want to take an aggressive approach with this song like we wanted to get a message out but we wanted to sort of be viewed in a um yeah now you need to word for positive, me but positive, yeah, fun we wanted light, assertive yeah. but not aggressive like yeah rather sort of rather like see talk it. about hate and negative haters we wanted to promote love and promote the positive side and right. that there's nothing wrong with you know um like equal love needs to be approved it's that's, that's that's pretty much what we're saying. Yep. End of the end of the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so Come on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, it's your first collaboration together, obviously, and um, there's been quite a lengthy process, as you said, going through it. And knowing you two guys off air, I know you're both quite nervous and shy people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big talker, but, big talker. But you're performing to uh, you perform to quite big crowds with this song. I mean, what's that process been like for you? Are you kind of still shaken about it? Oh, it was so exciting. The biggest gig we've ever done. Wow. So yeah, pretty exciting. What was it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely nerve wracking, but yeah. what an opportunity. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah. That was my goal, sort of, to get to tea, so yeah. I was just stoked. Like, yeah. midsummer, that's. Midsummer like 2014. From yeah, rehearsals in my uh, living room with remote controls to, <laughs> to the actual stage in front of people. Oh, getting goosebumps now. Just <laughs> awesome opportunity. And just to be able to share a song with that kind of meaning has just been such a privilege for us. Like, it's just awesome. Yeah. Have you thought about the kind of impact this song is going to have on people because people tuning in to this song and people who have their own stories as a gay and lesbian person in the community, have you thought about the impact it's going to do, how many people it's going to touch and the uh, empowerment you're going to give people with it? Definitely. Um, I mean, I've already had some response through Facebook and um, just people sharing how much it's, you know, really connected to them. And especially, actually, just before we recorded the song, um, some of my really close friends went into a doctor to talk about um, getting a referral to have a baby mm -hmm. and the doctor refused to give it to him and said that wow. um, yeah studies have shown that you know gay marriages don't bring up 
kids because the families are less functional. And it Dear was me. a doctor. We mm -hmm. were, um, it fired me up. They were absolutely distraught. Um, it yeah. gave us such drive to just, you know, get this song out there. Like there's motivational factors that really just push it because we need to get the message across that it's just about love. That's, that's it, end of the story, you know? Yeah. So. It fires you up, hey? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, on that note, Hearts Can't Lie, it's a new single from Kimmy Mack and Delay, the collaboration. Make sure you check it out. It's got some powerful uh, lyrics in there. You girls, what's coming up for 2014? Um, me, I keep saying it, EP, I'm going to get, like, yeah, something cracking this year. Like, I'm just saving and, yeah, working on it. Hopefully get to do some more awesome collabs. Yeah, Maybe definitely. Maybe with Kimmy Mack again. <laughs> she came, we'll see. Definitely but, um, came. <laughs> Kitty yeah. Mac and Delay, make sure you check them out on Facebook and Twitter. Just It's delay, D apostrophe, L dot A, and Kimmy Legend. Mac with an I. So check it out. This has been Ginny on Bent TV, entirely powered by Ginny. Now, if you'd like to help us at Bent TV, um, if you'd like to volunteer or become a series producer or a camera person, please, please contact us at www.benttv.org.au. We'd love to hear from you and we could really do with the support and the help. Thank you. Good night.